So we've looked at share prices already and this is the DAX. The main thing that I wanted to note when it comes to equity is that basically it's an uptrend. So over time it's going, we're always getting higher highs and higher lows. Which kind of makes sense because you know you're investing in companies which are growing, uh, you're getting an efficiency boost and there's also inflation going on in the background so the price of everything is going up due to that. Now I wanted to look at bonds but actually I, I've always been trading shares and currency so I don't like on daily FX on this site I don't really have access to the bond prices and charts I'm not really familiar with bonds so I can't comment in the same way about them as I could when I was talking about shares or when I was talking about currencies so unfortunately I actually I don't know the main types of bond markets I mean I could say there are junk bond markets there are a municipal you know where you you lend a little to regions so uh, in the states you know you can lend money to maybe the city of Chicago you can lend money to companies which is more of a US thing most of the money in Europe is for companies is via the banks but you know I wouldn't be doing it justice and I'd be wasting your time so then I thought okay but what about commodities because I have traded uh, gold oil and various other not so much soft commodities I haven't really done that much on you know corn or soya and all that kind of stuff so I wouldn't know the the distinct the tricks of the trade when it comes to those or, or in what way the characteristics again like how are they different to shares but if you look at say oil well there it's also gone up but essentially the trend is you know it would be a mean reversal kind of market so what I could say about commodities in general even is you have that mean renewal nature so the price of say oil but it, this would be the case for many commodities is say at a certain level then in this case you know if demand picks up or supply goes down because say with oil oil wells run out regions which used to be you know your main producers so like Texas uh, Baku for the Soviet Union you know they, they it was oil was just everywhere but then suddenly it gets harder and harder and it runs out so then you've got to find somewhere else somewhere where it's perhaps on where it's most likely not as easy to get it's not as abundant so I mean at the moment Saudi Arabia is king I mean it's it has loads of oil and they seem to be able to produce it very cheaply the bet then is 
for how much longer? That's a very secretly, secretly or closely held secret, if in fact even they know. But if, say, a region has trouble with the soil, then suddenly the supply falls, while the demand is increasing all the time. So then you're going to get the prices going up because people are fighting over a scarce resource. At the same time, you have OPEC. You know, when oil is falling in price, they'll kind of, in theory, you know, control the supply of oil, reduce it so that they don't end up giving it away for free. So you have, though, periodically oil shocks. You had one in the 70s, when suddenly oil does surge up. But then, you know, though that's, it depends. I mean, how you could say they're like short term, that's a short term phenomena in the general background of oil just kind of being range bound, kind of in this region. So this recent thing where oil shot up to 140 or higher then fell back down again is it falling further now so do, should you be bothered about these occasional crazy periods you decide but the mean reversal thing will kick in so when oil was very high in price, loads of people started went, or loads of people went, oh, we have oil. Now it might have been, it might be, might have been hard to access oil. So instead of being getting, instead of being able to get oil at ten dollars a barrel like Saudi Arabia, maybe it would cost you fifty. But if oil went up to sixty, seventy, eighty. Then it'd be it would be profitable. So then you invest. So as all went up, more and more people start started drilling, borrowing, investing in the infrastructure, and that takes time. So it'll it, it would have taken several years before that investment before those investment investments started producing so as time went by more and more oil is being produced and also when oil is very high substitution kicks in suddenly wind power solar power people are looking for other alternatives because that's very expensive so those alternatives would be will be reducing the demand and all the people all the new producers who become profitable at 40 50 dollars and who are now producing more and more oil are increasing supply so that combination of reduced demand and increased supply will push the price of oil back down again and unfortunately like you know with housing booms and stuff people loads of money would have kicked in and would have surged into oil just when it was peaking so suddenly people will have begun drilling all over the place investing borrowing huge amounts of money but by the time those projects suddenly come online, oil was only 80, then 70, then 60, and all those guys are in a not so good place. So how do you trade oil? Well, the basic characteristics are similar. If it's range bound, you, you have a kind of low and a high, 
you kind of want to sell when it's high and buy when it's low. It, when it broke out, well, that's a trend. So, you know, we'd be using moving averages, buying, holding on, getting in and out, depending on what your strategy is. So it's quite similar to, as I said, the comment, it could either, you have to decide, is this a range bound market or is it a trending one? And it is both at different times. And so similarly we have, so this is for oil and this is for gold. So this is a shorter period of time. Unfortunately, this chart only begins at 98. But here, you know, we've been in an upward trend for the last while. But has it now begun to collapse? Again, you decide. So this seems to be falling, you know, after such a up, upsurge. It could easily, you know, fall back to, well, like this became novel when it broke above 700. So will it fall back to 700? Nobody knows. So Th that's all I wanted to say about the different asset classes or different markets. I look at the more abstract classes of markets, so trending markets, range bound. Well, we've already talked about those. Those. What I haven't talked about is breakout markets. So there markets where you know you have a resistance and then suddenly the market as the name suggests breaks out of that range we'll talk about that on friday <laughs>